So uh, Austin Gami, uh, labor expert, has been saying that, look, that 0.5% of GDP, uh, you know, reduction in compensation for employees, uh, it should have come after a, a, a national meeting of labor. And the government should have basically consulted before doing it. I don't know what I think about that, but I, it just reminds me again of the issue of perception, which we started talking about yesterday, and how important it has always been. For which reason, I don't know why government never got it. Perception is everything. It's not about the quantum. It's not about the, the, the value. But you see, if you are going to ask people to go without, you must go without. You must go without. And you must do it in a way that's visible. You, as, 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 as you know, government appointees, you don't pay for anything. You don't want for anything. So pay cuts, they don't even impact you. They make no difference to you. So it would have been a proper chess move from the very beginning to demonstrate the willingness of those in decision-making positions to sacrifice. So that if you make a decision that requires the sacrifice of others, the others have no moral right to say no. But they never got it. They kept saying, but there was never any sacrifice from their part. Nothing significant. And they are still benefiting from largesse, even while we suffer. And they are still making decisions that demonstrate that they are better off. They are still flying their people outside for treat health care and education and all of that. We still have ministers whose children are schooling abroad. So when you then come and tell someone that, as for you, go and suffer free SHS. As for you, you will not get a pay cut. You will not get a pay rise. Meanwhile, me, I'm living large. You have to understand that it looks wrong. It looks wrong. And the thing is, it's a, it's a conversation. You are trying to influence the public. You are trying to make the public calmly go through hardship. But you are making no effort. You are, you are doing nothing to inspire the public to do what you want them to do. For me, that's it. That's the big problem. When I look at this thing from Austin Gami and this call for negotiation for this 5% reduction, even the fact that that is the, I, that is the thinking of a labor expert tells you that the, the view is that government has not met us halfway. They have not met us halfway. So no matter what decision you make, it will not be appreciated. You will not get automatic support because you are seen to be costing it. It's not fair. Page 10 of the IMF arrangement. Page 10 says primary expenditure will be reduced by 2 percentage points of GDP, mainly by I, lowering capital expenditures through project reprioritization, providing around 0.9% of GDP of savings. II, containing the wage bill by limiting wage increases and hiring into bracket 0.5 percent of gdp and so this is the two percent being explained to you and how it's going to happen anyway mm. and rationalizing goods but the understanding we are told is that these are part and see the heading of that paragraph 17 says the 2023 budget and associated bills enacted as a prior action for the program are consistent with these objectives so that's what says place there. It also talks about the other things that government intends to do in this area. I mean, hmm, consistently, there's reference to the post-COVID economic recovery program, hmm. which is Ghana's program, right? You know, we've been discussing this matter, and I've been saying, if you had a post-COVID economic recovery program, share with us. Let us all be on the same level. Let's, let's get to understand it. Let's agree and disagree. Let's fight over it. Let, let's get some of the details known. If Labour gets to know that this is some understanding in an IMF deal, no matter how it is construed, 
they feel sidetracked, mindful of what's happened in the last year or so on that particular front. So some more transparency at that level is required. And if you had been open with us and shared, if let's say we had a centralized document mm. and we all discussed that and that document ended up being the one we are taking to the IMF, people may disagree with you on the elements, but they will know and some of the things you are expecting to happen now may not happen at all. So I'm, I'm not sure why this was being treated like a secret court kind of thing. Like some very, very uh, serious thing that nobody could talk about. All that we were hearing was that this will be done, that may be done, all that will be done. But the details were not known to us. This is what's likely to happen and that kind of response you are having at the end of the day. I do not feel it's too late. The IMF and, and Ransford Jampo made reference to something. The 80s, the massive difficulties we had in the 80s, which almost led to a revolt, was because IMF programs were resisted heavily. So that's why I brought in PAMSCA to do social, uh, what they call it, uh, interventions to help uh, scale down the impact at the time. We can still have continued discussions, even within an IMF program, on the implementation. I remember the last program. There were times that we couldn't achieve certain targets, so we were discussed, some were moved forward, others were uh, abandoned. It, it's not cast in stone, we can still have conversation on that, but the people should be willing to come to the table with an open heart to engage on these matters. This is not something that is your personal property. Ideally, when you mismanage, you should not be leading this uh, recovery process, but you are still there. The, the approach should be one that says, oh, we are all in it together and we are all going to fix it together. Look, um, it's obvious that um, you find yourself in a very difficult place. Mm -hmm. And once you find yourself in a difficult place, there's nothing you can do. Uh, we could have done a lot of things differently, but we didn't do them. And so now we are where we are. And once we find ourselves here, we've had that conversation before that government should have actually started by, you know, uh, taking the bedding and then we would also join in the bedding sharing. Now, in the letter of intent, you talk about a 30% reduction in salary for the president, political appointees, and all of that. But the reality also today is that when people go on retirement, they're not going to be filling those positions easily. Streamlining and rationalization, mm -hmm. if they're not going to, I mean, they're not going to lay off workers because they can't afford to do that. But the reality is that labor today cannot co compel government to be increasing salary and saying times are hard, times are hard, times are hard. Because the government says that the uh, ability to pay mm -hmm. is what will determine capacity, capacity to, pay. to pay is what will determine the salary increases and productivity. Mm -hmm. Productivity. How many you know? And you know this whole conversation about productivity here. Look, if you go for an IMF program, you're just telling the whole world you're going through austerity measures. Uh, this year we saw a thirty percent increase in base pay. It won't happen next year. But that's because we mismanaged our economy. That's because we failed. Okay, unfortunately, the people who put us there have told us that we should praise them because in record time, they've achieved an IMF program. Very sad. But what can we do? What can we do? Can our MPs start another vote of censure? Well, your guess may be as good as mine.